Shabbat Shalom, Parashat Shlech Lecha. You will send spies to see the land. How is it? Is it good or it's bad? How are the people in it? And how are the fruits are it? The people of Israel are standing just now in front of entering the land, the promised land, the land that the whole story of the Exodus was this, for this moment. You're entering the land that God gave you. And on that minute, Moses decides to send spies, 12 people, random people. They're not random. They're like the leaders of every tribe. And they send them to Eretz Israel to see the land. We know the end of the story. The end of the story is that they come back and they say bad words about the land. The people are crying. The people are mourning the episode. And the punishment will be the people that cried because of it. All of them will never enter the land. All of this generation is going to go through 40 years in the desert and they would never come to the land. They will die year by year until the last 40 years will stop. There will be a new generation and only those people will be able to enter the land. It is a pinnacle portion. It's a question of life and death. We were sure that we were waiting for this moment of coming to the land, and that was everything. How come they've sinned? How come they cried? How come they were even sent from the first place? There are so many questions to ask about this portion, and indeed our commentaries continue and describe this story in so many different levels. And we need to remember this. This moment, when they're going to come back and they're going to give their news and their report, and it's going to be so negative, will change everything, will change the course of history. And the people of Israel will go in the desert, will dwell for 40 years. Everything changed at this moment. And the question, and the big question is, why? How? Why? There are many ways to look at it. There are many questions to ask. And I try to share a few insights from our traditional commentaries. Number one, we know the people were leaders. And in a way, according to many of the Hasidical teachers, it's a question of the leader looks at the story of coming to the land and he understands that something big is going to be changing. What is it? God won't be in our midst anymore. Right now, we wake up in the morning, we eat the manna, we have water whenever we go, there's a whale following us. Can you imagine the fact that now when they're going to come and enter the land, it will be different. Now they will need to work hard for their bread. They will need to work hard for their fruits and their, their water. And the leaders understand that. Leaders have this insight. And when they saw the land and they saw there's a lot of blessing in the land, they thought, great, we have a blessing. But what about God? God won't be present in our day-to-day -day life. And we know what's going to happen. In this perspective, the leaders did something good. They made us not enter the land because they understood that when we see God and we need to see the connection and it happens to us on a daily basis in the desert, it's not like that when you go and you work your field and you have fruit and vegetables and bread from the land. You forget that God gave you that. You think it's you, the farmer. So in one perspective, you can take this spies issue and look at the positivity in it. They didn't want to be abandoned from this God connection ongoing in the desert. Okay, if that's true, why did they get the punishment? It doesn't make so much sense. But that's one option. The second option, a famous option, is a story that says, very simple, we came, we saw, we reported. When they were sent in the middle and they were asked questions, they went through all the objects and they gave an answer. The answer was a report, an honest report. Can you be a sinner if you gave an honest report and just things did not look the way you think they were looking? And the answer of that, of course, is a perspective that says you were the leaders and you were supposed to see deeper. It's not what you see with your eyes, it's what you see with your belief. 
And they, when they stood there and they saw all the miracles and they saw how God provided throughout the desert, do you think God is not going to provide there? Do you think God is not going to win the wars with the enemy, with the giants you were describing? You were supposed to look deeper. And this is why you were sent. If we wanted professional spies, we would just send warriors, you know, FBI agents, Mossad agents. We sent you spiritual leaders of the nation, and you were supposed to look, look deeper into the perspective. But the explanation that I think is the most connected one to reality is the explanation that says as follows. To understand the story of this week portion, you need to look before and you look after. What was the last section that we talked about in last week portion? We talked about how Miriam talks bad to Aaron about Moses. The story there, if you remember, is that Miriam goes and speaks about the wife of Moses to Aaron. She says what she says. And then God punishes her with leprosy. Moses goes and prays for her. And it continues. The next portion, or the next move after the spies, will be this weird story. In the end of the portion, it's called where those Jewish people, the people of the desert, saw what happened with the sin, with the people crying. They said, you know what? If that's the case, we will go forth. And they begin to climb this mountain that when they pass it, they will enter the land. They understand. They want to repent. So they did something. They did it now with their all of energy. Moses tell them, don't do it. It won't be successful. They do it anyway. And when they do it, they die in the process. That's another sin. These two stories and the story in between about the spies give us a line of connection that gives us the deeper answer of what's the story and what does the story tell us? There's one word, believe. When you believe in God, when you believe that God provides, all the questions will be solved. All the riddles will be answered. And I'll explain. At the story of Miriam and Moses, what were you asking, Miriam? You know that God chose Moses to be the prophet, to be in charge. Why do you question it? Any question that you will bring up basically asks questions about the decision of God. When you ask about decisions of God, we know you have a problem in your belief. And this is what's going to bring you bad things. And the last portion about the people who decided now and go again. You were asked to send the spies now. You were asked to stay and to be punished. When you want to put your perspective into it, your input, your decision, again, you're questioning God's decision. You're taking God's decision and you want to make it yours. And we say that there is a belief system. And when you're standing in front of God and understanding that God made a decision, you have the belief and you have the system that says, I know what he's doing, it's for the right. And with that, the story of the spies is being solved. The story of the spies was exactly that. You were sent because you were leaders. You were sent to report. And then in the last segment of what you say, you gave your own interpretation. We saw this, we saw that, and then we think we are not able. Who told you to ask questions? Who told you to question God? When you have a belief, when you know things are because God said so, this is where all the mysteries are being solved. God said so. God chose Moses. Just God gave the land to the people, and that's it. I think at these days, when you are standing in front of what we see after the 7th of October, this is probably the strongest notion we should develop in ourselves, the belief. When we ask questions, we're at, when we show doubts, it's natural. But this is a problem and something that's missing in our belief system. If we know God is there, if we know God controls the world, if we know God makes the decision according to what God sees in His perspective is the good decision, 
all the doubts and all the questions and all the unsolved systems needs to be solved. We are doing what God's want. We're making decisions according to what God showed us. And we're trying our best to put our perspective with God's perspective. This is something that is so crucial today. And more than ever, if you act upon your belief system, I think this is where your life is going to be on a different level. You and God will see the same perspective, knowing that He brought you to the land, He provided, and He's the one that made the decision, and you will follow. Shabbat Shalom.